One of my favorite kinds of electronics projects are the kind where you make two things talk to each other. Whether it's two microcontrollers using infrared or radio modules, controlling something that you made over Bluetooth using your phone, or even using a microcontroller to send a text message to your phone when something happens. There's just something oddly compelling about seeing something that you made interact with something else. So today I'm going to show you a couple of beginner-friendly ways that you can do just that. Okay, so I did this project for an episode of Verizon's Textbird series. I'll link to it below and I hope that you'll check it out. Uh, it was a ton of fun, but the idea was pretty simple. Use some parts from Adafruit and a smart plug from Wemo to make it so that when you talk into a Google Nest Mini, it'll send an animated message to another room. And what I love about this project is that it's super beginner friendly. It's even one that you could do with a kid to get them interested in electronics. Just don't let them do the soldering. But yeah, my son helped me out on this project and he thought it was the coolest thing ever. So today I'm gonna to show you how to do that project and I'll also show you how you can expand on it by connecting it directly to your Wi-Fi, turning it into a slick looking status indicator to let everyone in your house know when you're on a meeting. All right, so here are the parts that I used in this project. You can check out the blog post in the description for links to where you can get everything. Got a Feather M4 Express board from Adafruit, super nice CircuitPython board with tons of input and output, battery charging, onboard NeoPixel that you can control and code, just a great board that I've used in several projects. An 8x8 NeoPixel matrix. These are a ton of fun and super easy to work with and you can get them in different sizes. And Adafruit's got some CircuitPython libraries available that make it easy to display tons of different kinds of animations on them. Some JST connectors, these are optional, but they make it easy to connect and disconnect the LED matrix. A 3D printed enclosure. This one is pretty neat because first of all, it holds everything in place, but then this sort of lattice shaped piece goes over the LED matrix, isolating each of those LEDs. So then when you take a piece of frosted acrylic to diffuse the light, it gives it a really nice pixel-like effect. You can get this acrylic from Adafruit, by the way, and I'll link to STL files for printing out the enclosure in the blog post. And if you don't have a 3D printer, there are several online services that you can use to get it printed cheaply. This is the Wemo smart plug that I mentioned earlier. And since the CircuitPython boards immediately start running your code when they power on, this will make it really easy to turn on and off the animation using either your phone or a smart speaker like the Google Nest Mini. And then you'll also need some M2.5 screws and nuts to assemble everything. Then I'll also show you how you can use this board here. This is an Airlift Wi-Fi Featherwing and it has an ESP32 on board. So I'll show you how you can connect this to the Feather M4 Express, giving it Wi-Fi so that you can do stuff over the internet. So first we'll wire up the LED matrix to the Feather. I'm gonna use these JST connectors, but again, those are optional. So if you want, you can just wire them directly to each other. So if you look on the back of the board, there are two sets of pinholes, one with ground, five volts, and this one labeled DN, which is the pin that the Feather uses to control it. And then there's another set of pins with five volts, ground, and D out. So you can actually chain multiple boards together, uh, but we're just gonna be using the input side. Black wire will go to ground, red wire to five volts, and white to DN. And if you're new to soldering or worried about that part, don't worry, it's not as hard to learn as you might think. And I'll link to a soldering crash course video that I did in the blog post to help you get going. Then on the feather, the red wire will go to the three volt pin, which will work just fine with the five volt pin on the LED matrix, black wire to ground, and then the white wire to pin six. And there we go. Now we can plug it into our computer and load some CircuitPython code onto it. Okay, so this part's really easy. Check out the blog post for a zip file with all the files that you'll need. Plug your board into your computer and you should see a new drive called CircuitPy. First, we'll make sure that the board is running the right version of CircuitPython, uh, so double tap the reset button on the board to put it into update mode. Then drag the .uf2 file onto the feather boot drive that just showed up when it went into update mode. It'll reboot and that CircuitPy drive should show up again. Now drag everything from the heartbeat folder onto the CircuitPy drive. And that's it. The animation will start playing right when the board powers on. Now we're gonna set up Google Assistant to control the smart plug. So open that app on your phone. Go to settings, routines, add a routine. Add a command, which is what you'll say into the speaker to trigger the routine, and then add an action. Go to popular actions, adjust lights, plugs, and more. And if your smart plug isn't already added, you can add it here with the plus button. Search for Wemo, and after logging in, any smart plugs you have should show up. And you can set it to turn on. Now go into the Wemo app, and under Rules, 
tell it to turn off the smart plug after one minute. So now whenever you say whatever phrase you set up in Google Assistant into the Nest Mini, the plug will turn on, the animation will play, and it will shut off after one minute. You can also add other actions to that routine like sending a text message. It's pretty cool, there are a ton of options. All right, so now let me show you how you can expand on all that and add Wi-Fi into the mix and turn it into a home office status indicator. So this board has an ESP32 on it, which is a microcontroller in and of itself. It's pretty powerful and it has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. In fact, I've used it in several projects that needed internet access. But in this particular board though, it's meant to be used as a companion to another board to let it connect to the internet. So we're gonna connect a few of these pinholes to corresponding pinholes on the feather board. I'll put a wiring diagram on the blog post, so I won't go over that in too much detail here, but if you get colored wires like the ones I have here, it'll make it a lot easier to follow along. Adafruit sells variety packs of this wire. It's this super flexible silicone wire, which I'm a huge fan of. And again, check out the blog post for a wiring diagram of which pinholes you need to connect on the two boards. So to make this all work, we're gonna use two services. We'll use Adafruit IO to talk to the Featherboard, and then we'll use If This Then That to talk to Adafruit IO from Google Assistant. So first, create an Adafruit IO account and go to Feeds. Create a new feed, name it whatever you want, and make note of this key that it spits out here. A feed is basically a place that you can add and read from a list of values that can be whatever you want. In our case, it'll be whether you're busy or free. So we'll be adding to that list from if this, then that. So go over there and create an account and then create a new applet. I've already got one set up for setting the status to busy, so I'll make a second one here for setting it to free. So the if part is whatever will trigger this applet to run. And we're gonna use Google Assistant for that. It'll make you sign in with your Google account. Choose say a simple phrase, and then you can type a few phrases that will trigger it. Now the other half of this is the action that it'll perform. So go in there and choose Adafruit, send data to Adafruit IO. It'll have you log into your Adafruit IO account and then your feeds should show up here. So select that and set free as the value that it'll send. So now when we say one of those phrases to our Google Nest Mini, it'll send that value to Adafruit IO where the feather will be able to pick up on it. Last thing that we need to do is load the status indicator code. So plug in the feather board, and we'll be copying over the contents of the status light folder. After you do that, open up the secrets.py file in a text editor and fill out your Wi-Fi information and your Adafruit IO info. You can get your username and key by clicking on this button and then the feed name from your list of feeds here. Now you shouldn't need to edit the code, but real quick, just wanted to show you that here is where it's watching for new values to pop up in that feed and keep track of it. And then down here, we're checking that value to see which animation we should show. Hey Google, I'm busy. Okay, I'll set your status indicator to busy. Hey Google, okay. I'm free. Okay, I'll set your status indicator to free. All right guys, well, I think that about covers everything. I'll link to a blog post in the description with everything that you need to do these projects. And then if you want help, or if you just wanna talk about other projects that you're working on, I'll link to our Discord server there as well so you can jump on and chat with us. Huge thanks to Verizon and their Techsperts team. This video was done as a partnership with them. And like I say, it was a ton of fun. I'll link to that episode below if you wanna check it out. Last but not least, as always, a big thanks to my Patreon supporters. I really appreciate you guys. Uh, you'll see their names at the end of the video as usual. Um, and yeah, stay tuned for more projects soon, and I'll see you guys next time.